Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Jaisha and in today's video, we are gonna be talking about the natural hair staples. We're gonna simplify it to the real basic stuff. What are the products and the tools that you need for your hair to flourish? What are the things that you should be doing so that your curls, your kinks, your coils can live their best life? Let's talk about it. So, first thing on the list, this is probably going to be one of the most important things I tell you. Deep condition your hair. You want to deep condition your hair. This is my go-to. Anytime someone is struggling with their hair, anybody has questions about how to revive their hair, I always suggest deep conditioning. And I, when I say deep condition, I'm not talking about just a regular conditioner sitting in your hair. I'm talking about a deep treatment mask, not the conditioner that you just put in your hair in the shower and rinse off. You need a deep treatment mask. I wash my hair once a week and I also deep condition once a week. Every time I wash my hair, I deep condition for at least one hour. Now, if you don't have an hour, maybe try to do 30 minutes. Now, if you add heat or steam, you don't have to do it for as long. If you add heat or steam, it opens your cuticles, your hair cuticles, and allows the moisture and the nutrients to penetrate your hair and get that moisture in there even quicker, even better. And if you have a low porosity hair, you definitely wanna make sure that you are adding heat or some type of steam to your deep conditioning treatment because low porosity hair is very hard to get the cuticles open and to get the cuticles to lift and to get the moisture in. Now, I know that some people deep condition overnight. I've done this myself a few times, but recently I learned that it's not exactly the best thing to do for your hair and you're not really getting, you're not really getting the benefits that you think you're getting. It's not good to go to sleep with wet hair, especially if your roots are wet. Supposedly, this can cause mold on your scalp. Now, I, I'm not a scientist. I don't know how true that is, but I mean, when you think about it, it is a wet and dark environment, so it's awesome. Who knows, but it's a no for me. Also, once your hair absorbs, you know, all the moisture and the goodness of the deep conditioning, it's not really gonna be able to absorb anymore. So, you know, it does its thing, while it can do its thing, and after that, it's not really doing anything, so it's just not good. So I would stick to just an hour to a few hours during the day, or maybe less. Do what works for, do whatever works for your schedule. You know, put your deep conditioner in, do some work around the house, watch a movie, watch your favorite show, and then go rinse it out. Boom. Next up is the leave-in conditioner. I always use a leave-in because it's a leave-in. I mean a conditioner that you don't have to rinse out that you leave on your hair. So I always start my styles with a leave-in conditioner. After I rinse out my deep conditioner and my, I towel dry my hair or t-shirt dry my hair, I always start my styles no matter what it is with a leave-in conditioner to hold in and lock in that moisture. If you want to lock it in even more, you can add a oil, some type of sealant on top of your leave-in conditioner and it will just make sure that it's sealed in place. I'm not very consistent when it comes to oils, so I usually just do a leave-in conditioner, but it is very important, especially because my stylers are usually a gel. So for the most part, it's usually gonna be leave-in, sometimes oil, and then gel. And a good leave-in will also help you when it comes to detangling your hair in the styling process, which leads me to my next point. Next staple product, and I'm sure we all know this by now, but you need a good detangling brush. Super important for your hair. And when I say detangling brush, I need a brush that is meant to detangle, not a paddle brush or a bristle brush, which I mean, it's still okay to have those things on hand. You, I still use a bristle brush for when I am putting my hair in a bun or a ponytail, I want it slid down, I use a brush. A power brush, I don't really own one and that's because those little tiny balls on the end of the brush can tug at your hair and cause, you know, pulling and damage and you just don't want that. So 
I use either a tangle teaser to detangle or a Denman brush, which are great for detangling. They also are good with giving you a little bit more curl definition once you have the product in your hair and you use that. Another important, very important staple when you have natural hair is going to be your nighttime routine. Are you going to bed without twisting your hair, without a bonnet on your head, or without some type of silky pillowcase? No good. It is important to have some type of silk or satin on your hair at night because laying on your head at night when you're asleep will cause a lot of friction and tension on your hair. This can damage your ends because it can cause knots, it can cause breakage it can cause split ends and if you're laying on your head it can also you can also damage your edges and who wants that if you are a the type of person who is lazy or forgetful or you don't want to have to think about something to do to your hair at night i suggest getting a silk or satin pillowcase that way you don't have to worry about anything. You don't have to do anything to your hair. You can put it in a pineapple if you want to, or you can do nothing with it if you want to and just go to sleep on that pillowcase. And then you can sleep in peace knowing that you're not gonna be bald headed. The next tip, this is also gonna be an important one, is you want to minimize the amount of heat, the amount of direct heat that you are putting on your natural hair. Direct heat includes heat tools such as a blow dryer, a curling iron, a flat iron, a curling wand. These things will cause damage to your natural hair. And once it is damaged, there's no going back. The only way to get rid of heat damage is to get rid of heat damage. I have been there before. I've had massive heat damage on my hair and I cut it all off. Now, I don't have any regrets about that probably the best thing I've ever done for my hair. But if you want your curls to be living their best life, you want the popping curls, you want the popping wash and goes, you wanna minimize the heat. Every once in a while is cool. I have to straighten my hair in order to get it trimmed. So, you know, every so often is okay. If you use a diffuser to dry your hair or you sit under a hooded dryer to set your styles, totally cool. But if you have excessive use, your curls are not going to be the healthiest that they can be. And if that's what you want, don't want to use that. And finally, my last tip for anyone with natural hair is to just be consistent. Find a routine, find products that work for you and your lifestyle, and just try to stay as consistent as you can with what you do to your hair. If you can do low or no manipulation styles that don't cause you to have to continuously redo your hair or touch your hair at all, go for it. Once you are consistent with what you do to your hair, your hair is definitely going to flourish. So that is it. Those are my go-to staples for every natural to be doing so that your hair can be nourishing and flourishing and beautiful and full of life. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what some of your natural hair staples are, what works for you, and leave me a comment. Let me know what kind of videos you want to see about hair. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more hair content. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye!